a fountain back in Rome. I fell in love with you in a small cafe in Athens. You said you loved me too. You never, ever, ever answer your phone when I call you. Ever. I, I, it's like a waste of time. Artie Lang will take oh, you yeah. home. I'm going to bring the room down a little. Thank you, Artie. Thank you very much, everybody. Be the Jose. rock star you Be are, man. Be a guana. Hey folks, it's Eugene Driscoll of ValleyIndy.org. Listen, if you want to get right to the interview in this episode, skip ahead to about the 11 minute mark. Thanks. This is Ethan Fry of ValleyIndy.org. That other voice you were just hearing was Eugene Driscoll, the editor of ValleyIndy.org. We're the only two employees of the Valley Independent Sentinel, a nonprofit news organization in, uh, in Ansonia, Connecticut. And Eugene, uh, we're sitting here on Thursday morning, January 19th, and Eugene's just recorded a podcast with a pretty famous figure. Who was that? I just interviewed, totally unprepared for 18 minutes, comedian Artie Lang, formerly wow. of the Howard Stern Show. And first, just, uh, I guess, by way of introduction, just tell us how this all came about so quickly this morning. Yeah, so I got up this morning after I helped to get my kids ready for school. Uh, I saw, I checked Twitter, you know, mm. and uh, Artie Lang, who I follow on Twitter, has been promoting his appearance this weekend at uh, Foxwoods. He's going to be there uh, January 21st, Foxwoods Resort Casino. And so I just thought, ah, what the heck? This is at 9.15. I, I, I'm ashamed to say at 9.15 a.m. I was still in my boxer shorts. Uh <laughs> But I just tweeted him. It was, you know, I just said, you got time mm. for a CT podcast phoner. And I said, we hate snarky Hartford DJs. Because Artie had just, mm. in Twitter, I didn't know what was going on, but apparently he, had, he, he actually, you can listen to it in the podcast mm. and you can hear uh, uh, why I, I referenced that. But anyway, to my amazement, Artie got back to me almost immediately and said, uh, you know, yeah, I just followed you, uh, message me mm -hmm. your number, which... I thought, okay, or I, it set off a panic in me because uh, I thought, okay, I'm not in the office. Mm -hmm. I'm at my house. I do have a USB microphone. I was like, okay, I can just plug that in. I'll record it that way. But because it's a phone interview and we do it, he's, I give him a Google voice number to call. I need to have the mixer and another wire. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, ah. So I'm sitting there trying to buy time and mm -hmm. I'm like, and then I'm trying to direct message him. Yeah, I yeah, wanted yeah, to say, yeah. give me, just give me a couple of minutes. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but I couldn't message him because, you know, it takes yeah, Twitter has for, this yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. He follows me. You got to wait until that it's enabled. And then I is. So anyway, I get in my car. I don't even like close my computer. I run out. I put pants on. I, I throw on the clothes from yesterday. You know, I run to my Pontiac vibe with mm -hmm. one hundred and seventy thousand miles on it. And, uh, you know, Artie's like, it's got to be now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then other people on his Twitter feed see that and people start liking and like mm -hmm. retweeting that it's got to be now. Yeah, yeah, you could hear so him saying that. You know, I'm gotta be now. You know? <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, now, like just yeah. Jersey voice. You know, and I'm cursing myself. Why didn't I just go? From Jersey. Why didn't I go right into the office? And anyway, I run up here. You know, I, I fly to work. I don't want to get into it, but I like you know I live a mile from our office in Ansonia, and uh, you know I, I took the stairs. I'm a fat guy. Mm. I always take the elevator. I took the stairs. <laughs> and in the beginning of the well, I'll play the little part. But before he calls, you can just hear some heavy, heavy nervous <laughs> breathing from me. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like turning down the police scanner. Oh, then I tweet to him. I tweet to him as a way I can't message him. So mm. I tweeted at him, "Hey, I, I, something like I'm at the cop shop or something. Yeah, I used yeah, like yeah, some." Yeah. And I was not at the cop shop. It was a lie. Like, I have to come clean I, I as yeah, a journalist. Like, give, me, give me 15 minutes to get away from, like, the cop station. It, yeah, I, I, it was an ethical uh. lapse. Uh, it was a complete ethical. It was a lie. I was, you know, and I have no excuse for it. But I'll just say, I thought I thought to myself, how can I make myself, you know, I'm a podunk mm. guy from a, a, a tiny, hyper-local publication in Ansonia. 
how can I make myself look cool so Artie will give me another big celebrity, give me a, a, a little mm. wider of a window yeah. uh, in which to interview him. So that's why I just said that. Because well, you walked you're, in. You're coming clean now, at least. You walked in. You're like, you, what were you, at the police station? <laughs> like, yeah, you know I wasn't at the police station. I just said that. Uh, so I get in here, you know, I, I, I set up our stuff. I'm panicking. I, I like this. The interview that you're about to hear is completely unprepared. You know, I had been thinking for a while. There's so many but questions. In another sense, you've been preparing for it your entire <laughs> life. Yeah, you're right. I have. But anyway. But no, yeah, I mean, you know, I, he's a fascinating guy to me. Uh, he, he, there's a million things we could have talked about. Uh, you know, I wish I had, I, you know, he's in this whole thing, you know, already has uh, publicly yeah, there's been sort struggled of a, a with, out with addiction, as he's, yeah. you know, and he's hardcore recently, heroin addict, mm. attempted suicide, basically extremely self-destructive. And I'm not saying this belittling the man. You know, one thing I tried to say at the beginning, and yeah, I'm completely, I'm, I'm butchering my words. There's so many, I'm not really, you know, proud of this interview, but hey, it happened. You know, you, you like the guy because you you listen to him on the Stern Show for all those years, uh, you know, and you you, you want to you don't want to see the guy, you know, end his life and and, and mm. fall you know to addiction. So anyway, uh, and I get worried about him because now he's back on the road again. You know, mm. what other because that's the weird thing with radio. You know what I mean? You feel like you it's a one way relationship, but you feel it's a relationship. So anyway, on that, all it, that it, background, it's fascinating to me, like the the. Like there, there's the debate I just sniffled going into on. the microphone. There was I just apologize. A, was it just in like the New York Times magazine? There's just a huge profile on Stern, or maybe it was like another publication about how he's like reinvented interviewing or whatever. Oh, and recently, like there, yeah. There's, there's like some two eras, or like you know, there was more than two. There's the Jackie era, I guess. Or, you know, we're yeah. getting deep into the weeds of like Stern well, fans. Well, and here's here, the but... thing. Here's the thing. I like <laughs> if you're not a Howard Stern fan, you might want to just yeah, skip yeah. this. And I, like, episode. I'm yeah, I'm not the biggest one, uh, but like. Um, you, you know, there's that debate about like, you know, was it better when it was sort of like, you know, more like juvenile and crass than like now where it's like they bring in like these huge celebrities to do these hour long interviews. But yeah, I don't know. What do you have any uh, opinion about that? Or? Oh, and I say it to Artie right at the beginning of the interview. I, for me, the golden era of Stern was when whenever Artie Lang was in the studio. Mm. And he gets into it a little yeah. bit. I, I, I don't, there's not a lot of follow-up questions to this because, uh, you know, I started to sense that he had to go. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I, 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 a couple times I just jump with new questions just to try to get him to keep talking. Uh, if I feel like he was losing his energy, you know, I tried. I just changed the subject mm -hmm. real fast. So there's not a lot of good follow-ups. But, you know, the thing was when Artie came on, he touches upon this a little bit. Howard was transforming. He probably had already transformed into the so-called... Hampton Howie's like he's, <laughs> he's like one of the richest yeah, celebrities yeah, yeah. on earth I mean people for you know Howard Stern is I mean for if my you, if you go Google Maps his Hamptons estate it's it's pretty cool yeah, looking, a, you know it's unbelievable extremely wealthy you know like in you know nowadays you get Floyd Mayweather all these like the celebrities that mm. like flaunt their wealth Stern is above and by, beyond head and shoulders mm. uh, in terms of the money he's amassed over the years and you know I don't think there's Anybody like him, any type of entertainer anywhere that's done what he's done, just have to go out every day. I mean, we've been talking for, for however, 10 minutes right now, and I'm sure we lost 90% of our listeners. So it's a, it's a gift, you know? Yeah. But so anyway, but he, as he became more sort of isolated from the common man because he just got so wealthy, mm. Artie yeah, he's the, was the, the connection touchstone. to New York. Everything that sort of, the, you know, the ingredients that made Stern so great at the beginning already sort of you know reinvigorated mm. that for a while uh but i mean and you just put, a, a great storyteller like uh you yeah know, just if you're on youtube and you, you know you don't mind some cursing it's uh, hugely yeah there should be should, go, you know, just, let's do some yeah. trigger safe space warnings <laughs> it's 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 offensive in yeah. any way imaginable just search like Artie lang uh, like the one that came to mind because he's in he's going to be in foxwood saturday uh have you ever heard the helicopter story yeah, where yeah he where I think yeah. he's, he talks two, about two going out to Foxwoods. Yeah, or, yeah. Uh, uh, like search that on YouTube or the. There's so much. Just search Artie Lang's story on uh, YouTube, and there's there's tons of them. And you know, it, when you go back and listen to some of the Artie stories now, it's, you know when you because he did try to to commit suicide, mm -hmm. you know, and luckily not successful. Some of the old Stern shows where he's clearly now it's obvious that he yeah. was struggling. Yeah. Uh, towards the end there they're not they're not quite you know it, it, there's another edge to them now 
so I just hope the guy uh, stays healthy, you know. And, and, that was, and he's that got was, that Judd, he's on a Judd, suddenly he's on a Judd Apatow show yeah, that's yeah. coming out. And, and that, that was also like one of the aspects of like the whole him and Stern interplay was how, and like this is one of the best things about the the Stern show over the years was that like he would <laughs> he would like cause all of these internecine conflicts or not cause them but you know that not, is a big word not you know not keep them from developing and then who you, you mean know, Stern would yeah, yeah yeah all the staffers yeah. would be yeah. fighting with each other right. on and, air and, and, and stuff and that's to me uh, you know to answer your earlier question that's what I miss mm. about the Stern show where those. Totally, and, and he says they were, a lot of them were, because I asked him about a couple of fights, mm-hmm. and a couple of, you know, I asked him about Donald Trump and, and making Donald Trump angry, and whether that was something they had planned beforehand, but it wasn't, and that's what I miss from, I, I mean, I don't, I don't, who cares about celebrity interviews, you know, I mean, unless you're listening to Artie Lang, but, you know, I don't need to hear Howard Stern talk, he, he you know, he's, he's trying to become a podcast, mm. uh, and I think there are already a couple of good podcasters out there, including us, uh, Mark Marin. you know what I mean, that, like, that, yeah, yeah. Stern should just, continue uh, doing what he did best which was bringing the lives of Amy ordinary Fisher people and Joey Buttafuoco right yeah all that kind of yeah 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 and you know having already insult them right yeah just that totally improvised but because because Stern was always and Artie says this a lot more eloquently than I can but you know Stern was the guy you know banging on that window and giving the finger mm. to the establishment and that celebrity culture and and all that that's what he was famous for and he's lost that yeah. uh, but hey yeah, you know he wants to be in the room with them but yeah and he can do what he wants i mean the guy is obviously a genius but anyway that was an 11 minute intro sorry right. here no is Artie lang hey this is the valley indy Artie lang here Artie, holy cow I'm uh, on, man. Let's go. Hey, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. So you're just right now on Twitter uh, complaining about a uh, Hartford DJ. Is that correct? What's the story there? What's going on? I, I got it. It's, it's like seven years ago. I don't remember the guy's name. Eight years ago. I was. I got out of rehab. My uncle picked me up. We threw a radio station on it. Some guy was talking about my Howard situation. And uh, because I had, uh, I had mentioned to somebody who put it on Twitter, I was getting out of rehab that day. And uh, some guy just like real quick uh, before he played a song by Ario Speedwagon <laughs> said, uh, "Are you retired? Get some rest." And then uh, played a song. And I looked at my uncle and said, "Well," and uh, I said, uh, "I don't want to put Howard on. It was too kind of painful." And then, of course, it was so funny because now I ended up getting <laughs> anyway. Uh, and my uncle turned it off, and then we got into an argument about something. I don't even remember the guy's name. So, but Ario Speedwagon. So that's a surreal experience. So, would you win? <laughs> At the time, were you in I rehab? Know. Were you in rehab up in in Connecticut? Like, how did how did Hartford? Silver Hill, Silver Hill, Connecticut. Oh, no kidding. So, speaking of your health, Artie, like I've listened to the Stern show. I mean, I'm 42 years old, right? I got a brother right. in his 50s, uh, and he got me into Stern on the you know the NBC days. We would you know record <laughs> off the radio. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and, and for my mind, you know, you know, Jackie Martling was great. Nothing, nothing uh, against the Stern Show, you know, past or future or present. But you were the greatest era of the Stern broadcast, in my opinion. Wow, uh, the greatest era? <laughs> no, listen. Thank you so much, man. I, when people say that to me, and I think way more people do than should, but I, I, you know, I really, really it makes you feel great. It makes. You know, you get into the show business and try to get into comedy, you, you do so much stuff that uh, is uh, is embarrassing, you're broke, you're sleeping on the floor of Penn Station to get a bus home. I remember doing that once going, I hope this is all worth it one day. And somebody like you saying that makes it worth it. It's better than the money, I'm telling you. Well, one of the things, you know, at the time when you, when you were on Stern, you know, when you first went on to FM, you know, I'm a reporter, right? I'm a local news reporter. You know, it, yeah. mo- most of us make 30 grand. So it's like right. we're not we're not doing this for uh, for the fake news or to get a president elected. Sure. We do it, it. It's a calling. And you were right. a guy, man. I would listen to you on Stern, and it was like you know, like you hear all the cliches. You park your car on the side of the road. You listen, uh, and then to have you, you know, it's almost like you, you. I don't know you. I never met you, but I think you're a friend because I heard you on the radio all those years. Right. And, and to hear you struggle like you did, you know, so many people I think were so worried about you. Uh, and they want to see you do well and be healthy, and uh, you know, because yeah. you're you know you're one of us. How are yeah, you doing? Well, like yeah. I see on your Twitter feed, you're working a lot again. You're doing you're doing stand up nonstop, and that sort of insane schedule 
uh, uh, took its toll on you previously. How are you doing now? Well, you know, the thing is that, that happened last year was kind of hitting a comedy lottery and could cut into that uh, crazy road schedule. Was like I booked this show on HBO called Crashing with uh, Judd Apatow, and it premieres February 19th. We shot it all last summer. I'm in most of the season. And uh, I play myself. The first episode is titled Audio Line. It's surreal. <laughs> and uh, it's supposed to be very well. Uh, there's a shot. It'll get picked up with Judd. Uh, you know, they're probably going to second season. I hope the show Girls is going off the air. He's a big deal. He's a great guy. And uh, like if that goes for another season, I think I should be there again. And uh, I just feel great acting again. And I'll take the road away. And th that was the lifestyle where I, when I was on a sitcom norm, I had a great lifestyle in L.A. I made good money doing a sitcom that lasted two years. And uh, I did stand-up on the side. That was perfect. Mm. And uh, hopefully I can do that again. And then, and then in terms of, I mean, you probably get this question asked all the time, and I should just say for anybody uh, listening when we post this, I've had no preparation. I just randomly sent Artie a tweet, and to my amazement, he uh, he responded to me. Truth be told, Artie, I was sitting there in my boxer shorts because I, you know, I, I was I had to work late last night. I had some other stuff to do. I did not expect you. So there's no preparation here. But, uh, you know, I know. Yeah, I like I like trying to help some people out, man. That's, that's, that's good. You're interested. Almost, yeah, but almost to a fault. You know what I mean? I, I you know, I, I, but <laughs> but in terms of uh, the Stern show, you know, I guess uh, just to ask you, I, I probably know the answer to this, but has there been any movement in terms of uh, any kind of contact with uh, uh, the King of All Media himself? Uh, in, in no, no, and I don't think there ever will be. I mean, I just uh, you know, again. <laughs> Howard uh, did for me what, uh, you know, no one else did. I had a lot of people help me in my career, but, but, you know, the job Howard got me was amazing. And I'll never lose sight of that. And, uh, but I don't know, it's the last couple of years, there's a weird situation over there. Where I think a lot of people used to work there and I work there now would tell you uh, he's sort of a different guy and it's not a good thing. And there's forces over there that might, you know, allude to that. And I think I've taken the gloves off in a way where uh, he's choosing to ignore me, which is a good thing on his part because, you know, I'm the guy who's nobody. If he acknowledges me, it just makes me uh, more relevant. But I just have fun because I know it's right. What I'm telling you, what I'm doing, I know is right because I think the guy's brainwashed and hopefully this will snap him out of it. But I'm attacking on a level on my show every once in a while where, you know, he's got to be seething mad at me if I know him. And he'd love to respond, I'm sure, but he's just not going to because that's the right thing for him to do. He's the king, and I'm over here doing my thing. But, look, I, uh, I'm i still in Major League Show business, making a good living and having fun. I, uh, I've i never been happier in my life. People who say, oh, you blew it with the Stern Show. In the beginning, that was true, but now... I wouldn't go on that show for all the money in the world. No and, way. And it's why just, is that? Because it's, it's just so different? It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. You live under a, a, a It's like a, a, a tyrant. And it's not even him. It's just broad Marcy Turkey. Mar he uh, married the 40s. So. A broad Marcy Turkey. He fucking uh, hired to be everybody's boss. And, and when she's like a con artist. When do you think, have you, do you have any info like when that started? When did Stern start uh, to make uh, a that turn? Of guys. A couple of guys at each channel got fired and called me and said what was going on over there, and I couldn't believe it. Like, stories like you need permission from her to talk to Howard. People he knew for 20 years couldn't talk to him without permission from her. Uh, and I said, you got to be kidding me. That's stuff we used to make fun of, like Scientology. Does. And, uh, you know, through different channels, I found that was right, and I found that he, he was, no one was allowed to say her name on the air. He wanted to keep her off the air. And I, uh, I kept pushing until finally I had to acknowledge her because it was all, I kept talking about it. It was all over the Internet. And I tell you right now, I wouldn't do something to hurt Howard ever. I think I'm doing him a favor. His, his legacy is going to be hurt. The guy I knew was the greatest guy, generous, loved everybody on that show, had a good relationship with everybody from janitor to, to the top, on air and off air. And now he's, uh, he's, he's, he's brainwashed under some woman and it's ruining his personal legacy, at least. And I, I'm doing him a favor trying to say, look, this bro and uh, what about like uh, 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 Gary Delabati or anything like that? Have you has has he reached out to you in any way? Do you guys have any main uh, relationship? I talked to Gary. Yeah, I talked to Gary over the years a couple of times, but it's a very awkward situation because, uh, you know, he's he's uh, he's got to report to Howard. I I don't want to talk to Gary because we it can't be an honest conversation. Anything mm -hmm. I say, he's going to tell Howard that Howard want to know. 
So uh, I can't believe people think I know that. And uh, anything he says is going to be guarded and fake. So I don't want to have a conversation like that with a guy who used to be a friend of mine who I didn't have to have a conversation like that with. And then uh, in recent weeks, there was actually a couple of weeks ago on your podcast, Time Flies, you, you went after Stuttering John a little bit for his uh, foray into politics. Uh, <laughs> Now, yeah, I will. Are Jimmy you guys was on. say that again? I'm sorry. Jimmy Florentine was on, and we busted John's balls. If any one of us announced becoming a senator, we would all get our balls busted. I can't believe John thought he wouldn't. So John and I talked out. I love John. I'll support anything he does. What that was the other day was goofing around. And to be serious, uh, if he really wants to do it, I would do nothing to help him. Uh, every, everything to help him. He's a friend, you know. What I, we were goofing. No, okay, because yeah, because it sounded I I had a feeling maybe uh, Stuttering John took that uh, uh, seriously uh, there, but you guys are saying you're okay. Hey, what about AJ Benza being in the news uh, recently? From his, uh, it, it seems like the whole uh, world has discovered that uh, you know you can listen to old Howard Stern tapes. Uh, the uh -huh. whole thing he had with uh, Trump and, and, and AJ Benza. Uh, yeah. Any thoughts on that? Oh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, listen, I, I, I hung out with Trump a few times and played golf with him. I rose to him. I, I love the guy. I love Trump. He's a, boy, he's a guy you can break balls with like you're in the eighth grade. I really, I really do like him. Me and Eli Manning did nine holes once for a charity at his place in Bedminster, and it was like we were in the eighth grade having fun. Uh, I don't know if that temperament works for the White House, but he's got my support. He's president. But Let's didn't you, you, you kind of take him off on... I'm sorry, go ahead. Go AJ Benza, on the other hand, is a great, great friend of mine. Great, great friend. I love AJ. He's a personal friend. Anything AJ says, I'm sure, is true. And uh, if you're going to have somebody talking uh, gossip like that, AJ is the king, and it's relevant. It's the president. So, uh, you know, it'll blow over, but it's fun to listen to. AJ's a talented guy. There's a pretty funny uh, old Stern there where it seems like for a second uh, Trump turns on you. And do you remember, recall that particular? Uh... Oh, yeah. Believe me, I mean, it's one of the craziest moments ever because. I roasted him for uh, uh, the Friars Club, but it wasn't a televised roast. It was just for the New York Hilton and the press on the Friars. But I had no idea it was videotaped on any level. The quality wasn't great, but it was good enough when I saw it a few months ago. Somebody tweeted it to me, and I was so proud of it. It's one of the best roasts I ever did. That, that roast actually got me. That set got me at Carnegie Hall. Caroline, who ran the New York Comedy Festival, was at that roast, and it put me back on her radar for something like sort of high profile like that. She thought it was uh, as good a roast thing as she ever saw and gave me Carnegie Hall later that year, which was amazing. You never know what happens in your career. I got voted best roaster there, and the joke I did about Trump uh, got voted best a joke of the day, and it was about his business, which he gets very aggravated about. Um, and uh, he, he laughed at the roast, but then on the Stern Show a couple weeks later, Howard made me retell it. And he felt trapped, I think, and attacked. And there's that temperament, you know. And he said he, he called me a loser. It was hilarious. And what's what's sort of interesting, like just just you know, coming from that moment, you know, the way Stern is, uh, at least as a viewer and, wa and watching and listening to that particular exchange, it was like Stern was drawing it out of you. Uh, was he, is he like a master manipulator? Like, because you know, now with the well, internet, I mean. It, he is. In that particular situation, though, no. I mean, I knew what could happen. I, I wanted okay. to tell... I'm so proud of the joke. I would have told that a million times. I would have told it again. Uh, it's one of the best jokes I ever uh, wrote, and the, the New York Post uh, printed it in the front page of their gossip uh, column. And again, that, that's a lot of press. And like I say, it got me Carnegie Hall. Mm. It's... Uh, I knew the joke was good, so I would have kept repeating it. Uh, and Trump getting mad at me at the time. What do I get? <laughs> it was, you know, but uh, he came in saying what the paper said. He, he was telling the truth. He was already oh, was the best roaster. Right? You know, that's not always the case. I happen to have a good set. It could be sucky, but this worked. And it was high profile because of him. And he came in going, oh, Artie was great. He was the best ever. Howard made me tell a joke. And I knew what was going on there. We were baiting Trump is what we were doing. And mm. that's what happened, you know. And, uh, I mean, uh, CNN wanted to buy that. Uh, CNN contacted me about, you know, that clip. And they said, would I, uh, would I comment on it? I said, sure, it's press for me. But I think they got a little afraid of Howard. Yeah, in those uh, days, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, how much was yeah, that? Was, was it pre-planned, or that's all just improvised? As you, you and you and Howard had nah, that relationship. Nah, yeah, no, totally improvised. Nothing was. That's amazing. Uh, nothing with me. Nothing with me was ever planned. Howard didn't want me to hear anything because he wanted me to spontaneously just try to be funny in the conversation. That's how I, I worked the best. You know, when I think he was more conducive to his lifestyle with Jackie there, he was married. He wanted to stay there, write bits with. 
with me, he was when I got to the show, he was just starting to be sort of a man about town and a part mm-hmm. of New York. But they, he didn't want to be at the office so much. So me being a guy who could be spontaneous, he liked it. We're, if, uh, timing in life is everything, and I, that timing was all perfect for me. I was in the you know prime of my life in my early thirties, and I had just gotten out of a sitcom that I, uh, if I was contracted to do, I would have had to go back to L.A. instead of doing Howard, which would have really been heartbreaking. And he needed a guy like me, and uh, cut to you know ten years later, I, I, I carved out my little spot in radio history. And a guy like you said something as nice as you said, it's a great thing, you know. And then, you know, a couple of years ago, there, there, I was listening to something. I think it was Anthony Cumia and, uh, and Bill Burr, or Anthony Cumia re- relating a Bill Burr story when they would come off the ONA show uh, when they were together. How uh, it was sort of, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing here and I'm probably butchering it, but they were sort of emotionally drained. You know, you'd walk out of there and it was like you had just done battle and they would feel guilty about something they said on the air. Uh, what was that like? What was it mentally like to go through uh, some of the, like the blow-ups you had on the Stern show? I mean, you know, you famously threw, uh, what, a CD at Sal uh, and yeah, went off on Teddy know, that time. Uh... It's real emotions. The show was real. Howard created a sort of human experiment there. It wasn't any bull, which is why the show was good. People got angry. People got, you know, I got my uh, my Newark Longshoreman up. I didn't go to college. I'm not refined, and that's what happens. But, you know, it's up to a point. You know, Howard didn't want anything physical, and it got kind of crazy. But, sure, it's, it's you know, I would get out on a... I would get out on 6 a.m. and 11 o'clock in the morning and I'd go, what the hell did I just do? What did I just say? I said I was on a, a pig outfit doing cocaine. I mean, it was great. I, at one time, I'll leave you with this. I got it wrong. I'll give you this story. All right. uh, what it was like doing uh, a show in the middle of New York like that. I bought a new, my girlfriend bought me a new leather jacket, my girlfriend Dana at the time. And I thought it was nice, but it was kind of tight. So I wear it to the start show. So John, everybody, the whole show, they're roasting me. The jacket looks stupid. You look like a sausage or <laughs> stuff in a jacket. And I'm like, I like it. So I get out. It's 11, 1130. And a bunch of construction workers on 6 a.m. are having lunch, lined up. I know what a chick is like when she gets old now because they looked at me, they all listen to the show all morning, and they go, Artie, we think your jacket's cute. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when's your next and book? Like, Sorry, that's Artie, go ahead. That's what's great about it. That, that's what's great about it, you know. When's your next book coming out? I know you got the third one coming out. Uh, this is one Here, that... Uh, uh, yeah, thanks for asking. Either Father's Day or Christmas. All right, good luck with it. Hey, I won't. I won't keep you. Hey, what about Teddy? You still? You ever in contact with Teddy from the from the old days or no? I I, I love Teddy. You know, it was a misconception. Me and him had fights on the air, but me and him were together for two years. I burnt that kid out, man. <laughs> <laughs> he was he uh, he was there trying to deal with a junkie doing stand up all over the road and making a hundred grand a week and fans all over the place, hookers and. <laughs> he was, but he's great. He, he had with two years as uh, as long. You get burnt out, you know. Uh, but uh, I, I hope he's well. If I heard Teddy was unhappy in any way, it would make me unhappy. I love the kid. All right, Artie. Well, I, hey, I want to thank you for uh, for taking a couple minutes. Good luck at the Mohegan Sun uh, this Saturday up here in Connecticut. And, Fox, uh, Foxwoods, but yeah, thank, oh, thanks so I'll, much. Yeah, I'll edit that part out. Foxwoods. I apologize. Yeah. No problem. No problem. Don't say you're sorry. I appreciate the time, buddy. All right, Artie. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye. Okay, so that was Artie Lang, formerly of the Howard Stern Show. And uh, just to conclude, I wanted to briefly talk about the uh, the beeps you heard. This pot, for anybody who's like listening from out of the area, we're valleyindy.org. We're a two-person nonprofit online local newspaper, essentially, though we don't print paper. Based in Ansonia, Connecticut, this podcast also plays on an FM radio station in the city of New Haven, WNHH 103.5 FM, a low-powered station in New Haven, subject to FCC rules and regulations, hence the beeping. Another footnote, I have no idea how to edit audio to insert beeps, so... Hopefully those didn't come through. Maybe they did. Maybe it sounds hilarious. Maybe it makes the interview better. But uh, just a brief explanation. I thought Artie was exactly the way he was in that interview as he is on his podcast and as he was during his years on The Stern Show. Sometimes you interview comedians, like Jim Florentine comes to mind, a couple other guys, and they're uh, sort of much more serious and sober-like in their, you know, just interview persona their real life i guess if you will then there's other guys who were you know they're they're basically they'll they'll do their act for you rich voss was a hilarious dude to interview but Artie was just 
he was the most real of uh, you know a few celebrities that I've interviewed, uh, including Donald Trump, by the way. Look through our archives for a Donald Trump one from like 16 years ago. Anyway, I'm going to shut up. Thanks for listening. Bye.